Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. This is a Melty Brain. It works by spinning up to a very high speed and then by controlling the motors very precisely, you can translate around the arena and attack your opponent. This means it is highly dependent on torque and also that it has a tendency to absolutely destroy wheels. These were polyurethane over-molded wheels and it has worn them back down to the TPU print in both cases. Obviously, we need to do something about that. And what we're doing about that is not a new idea. In fact, if you've watched any NHRL at all, you have seen these. These are cleats. They are basically just spiky metal rings, and these have been machined for me by PCBWay out of 3mm thick spring steel. Now, PCBWay has a whole bunch of different metal options, and I am no metallurgist or material scientist, so I actually don't know if these are the right choice or not, but uh, I figured I'd give them a try. I'd never tried spring steel for anything before, so I can say these are fairly sharp. I don't know the exact machining process on these, but they have come out very, very well, especially the small details of the actual spikes themselves. The theory behind these is rather simple. Rather than being soft and squishy to increase contact area and therefore increase traction on the ground, the spikes simply stab into the ground and force movement that way. So obviously the next thing to do here is a direct head-to-head -head comparison between these two with the soft squishy overmold and the cleats. However, we're gonna need a few extra things first. So first of all, I've printed a new wheel which mounts to the cleat and is just undersized. So the actual spikes on the cleat should hit the ground first. And if the cleats ever wear down, then this wheel will take over. It won't have a lot of traction at all because it is TPU, which has, well, it has a little bit of traction, but not a lot. However, we need a few things. First of all, uh, we're going to need a new test platform because yeah, the old Melty Brain is very busted and we can't really test with this as it currently sits. So uh, let's fire up the laser. With the laser fired, we have enough pieces to jigsaw together a kind of test melty brain effectively. This thing has no weapon teeth. Yep, I'm missing a part. And no weapon teeth honestly is kind of fine for this because let's be honest, this thing isn't supposed to uh, actually be a melty brain and fight things. It is just to test the traction of the wheels that we're fighting with or attempting to fight with. While I put this together, I will say the other problem here is that we actually can't melty this in this video because I need a proper test box for that. And currently, my proper test box is being built, so it looks a little bit like this. So while it is coming together, it is not actually good enough for us to test in, certainly not at full melting speeds. So instead, what we are going to do is we are going to do a straight line speed test. This will actually also help because it will mean that we have to get some slow motion shots of the wheels and how much slip they actually have with the cleats versus the uh, polyurethane tires that I have molded onto these. Also, this new Melty Brain chassis is very, very light, which means that traction is going to be at a very low point anyway, which will actually be a good thing for this test because we'll see how these two different wheel types do under a very light load, which means that they should have less traction than in a full beetle weight. With that said though, the next thing we need to do is get all of the guts out of this into here. There should be a simple case of taking the lid off and pulling all of the wiring out and swapping it over into the wooden box. However, the connection order of a brushless motor's wires is very important, so I made sure to do these one at a time to disconnect them from the chassis and make sure that they stayed connected to the same port on the ESC so that the motors spun in the same direction. With that one wheel out, it was just a case of doing the same thing again to release the second. Reassembly process is as easy as gluing the front and back down, adding a bit of bicarb, Okay, maybe not that much bicarb. And then 
attaching the wheels back on with screws and then just clicking everything together. Now we're almost ready for a test. I just need to throw a battery in there and also kind of tape the top lid down. Everything kind of jigsaws together. So a little bit of tape should be more than enough to hold everything, especially as all we're doing is a straight line test into a wall. That should be totally fine for this. We're gonna start with our control with some polyurethane molded wheels and then we will move on to the cleats after that. So the testing methodology here was pretty simple. Set up a slow motion camera, put the robot in front of it and just push forwards on the stick. Which created some interesting results. If I was gonna do this again, I would standardize how fast I push the stick forwards because these motors are very, very overpowered. So in some cases, the robot flew and did ridiculous things. And in some cases, it just took off normally because I'd kind of feathered the throttle up a little bit. Having both of those test cases is probably a good thing because it leads to some interesting slow-mo, which we'll have a look at in a second, but uh, it does mean that there is inconsistency between the two sets of tests. Speaking of slow-mo, let's take a look at some of that. Now, the slow-mo does seem to reveal why the robot was turning towards the camera all the time. The robot is slightly heavier on the side facing away from the camera because that is where the battery is sitting and it seems as though that side is getting traction and almost like lifting the other wheel off the ground slightly and the other wheel is not getting traction, especially not with the polyurethane wheels. As long as the speed is kept slow, the polyurethane wheels have no trouble keeping up with the traction needed to keep the robot moving, but as soon as things go a little bit too fast, they skid and slip all over the place. Interestingly, kind of the same deal for the cleats. However, when the cleats skid and slip, they dig into the ground a little bit, destroying it and gaining just that tiny little bit of traction, meaning the robot doesn't spin on the spot. Instead, it kind of drives a bit of an arc, which is very, very interesting. I also got this particular slow motion shot where I drove away from the camera with the cleats on and you can see it digging up little sections of the wood floor as it takes off from a standstill, which is very, very interesting. It also made a bit of a mess of my wooden floor here. All right, so what conclusions can we come to out of all of this? Well, I think the cleats are an interesting thing. They I, I'm not sure I can conclusively say they have more traction. What I will say is that when they are slipping, they gain slightly more traction than the polyurethane wheel. And that is because they are basically <laughs> digging into the ground when they're slipping and moving that quickly, destroying the ground, but getting a small amount of directional movement in the process, which I think could help keep a robot moving, especially on a slightly harder wood than I'm using. I'm just using base level MDF, which is what ARC uses for our arena. And yeah, it on that it's very, very soft and the cleats here dig in super, super easily. But like I said, that does give the added benefit of a slight amount more forwards movement uh, when that is happening over the polyurethane wheels, when they're slipping, they just slip and nothing really is happening to push the robot in a direction. As you can see in those tests where one wheel is getting traction, the other wheel isn't, and it's basically pivoting around the wheel that does not have any traction. Which, yeah, that was interesting. It wasn't a result I expected to see. So the big question though is, will I continue to use cleats going forwards? And the answer is, Probably not. ARC is not a big club. We don't have lots and lots of funds. We can't keep replacing the floors. So things that do consistent damage to the floors are probably not the best idea. And yes, I might get a slight competitive advantage by basically ripping the floors up every single fight, but that does mean that within a couple of events, the floors are going to be totally trash and we won't have money for new ones, which would just make fights worse for everybody. So I think as fun as these cleats are, I will leave them for events where floors are being replaced every single event because the event uh, can do that. Um, and I will go back to using polyurethane for my melty brains 
for the time being. Or maybe I will try bare TPU, because that is my other option here. As mentioned at the start of this video, the TPU doesn't really have a lot of grip, but maybe that will be okay here. I don't know, it's possible, and it's something I probably should try out in the future. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video.